The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Bainbridge Island, Washington, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35010. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new vehicle. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two closed tow hooks attached to the right and left frame rail. Moving up onto the face of the bumper, you'll find dual air horns on the passenger and driver side. Located directly in the center, PA speaker and electronic siren. Moving to the notched area on the driver side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Let's move up onto the bumper extension where you'll find additional tow hooks located on the very front. Directly in the center, D handle will gain you access into the compartment. This is your front hose load. There is a swivel discharge inside. Moving up onto the cab on the outer edge, you'll find a marker turn indicator. Just inside of that location, you'll find your headlight structure housing the low and high beam headlight. High beam will be located on the inside. Just up from that, the turn indicator, and then also in the same bezel, you'll find an emergency warning light forward facing. You'll also find the number 21 in the grill, and also your department name across the top of the Pierce logo. There are three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. On the outer edges, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five clearance lights. Located in the center, you'll find your forward-facing brow light. You'll also find on the outer edge and the roof area additional side-facing floodlights. Moving up to the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located directly in the center of the light bar is your Opticom. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First, let's start with the bumper extension area. D-handle gains us access into this space. This is your front bumper load. Dry deck material on the very bottom section floor area. Swivel discharge against the rear wall. Let's move to the axle area where you'll find Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheels and also a sight gauge located on your front axle. As we move to the driver's space, we'll start first with the door panel. Accessing the door panel here with all of our safety and warning information affixed to each of the door panels. You'll also find your grab handle on the upper portion, door latch and lock on the inside, and then moving up to the upper right corner, you'll find your window controls for all four cab windows. Let's move to the base of the seat area next. First, starting at the bottom with your battery volt charger. When plugged into shore power, this will be active. As we move up to the seat, you'll find comfort controls. And then as we move to about the right ankle of the operator, you'll find this yellow placard. This is manufactured for your department from Pierce, indicating the five digit job number, date of manufacture, cold tire inflation, gross vehicle weight rating, the VIN number, all of the components, fluid capacities, and fluid types for each of those components. Let's go ahead and move now to about the left knee of the operator. We'll start down at the very bottom section. We have some switches down in the lower section and we'll identify these. Let's first start at the bottom with the ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. Just above that, you'll find the master battery switch and then all of our tech modules, engine ABS diagnostic and transmission ports and display ports. Moving up from this location, you'll find the control module for your inverter. We do have an on-off switch and also a digital readout. Moving to the right, you'll find a momentary opticom, perimeter lights, high beam flash, air horn, fan clutch disengage, and an option for siren or brake. When any of these switches have been activated, they will illuminate indicating they're on. Let's go ahead and move from this location just upward to you'll find your flat mirror and convex mirror controls. And let's move to the steering wheel now. You do have controls in the steering wheel in addition with a supplemental airbag system. This is the SRS front airbag within the steering column. To the left, you'll find light control, air horn control, and emergency light control. Moving to the left, you'll find the start and ignition switch. Moving further to the right, you'll find a switch labeled EM, stands for emergency master, engage or disengage all emergency lights. To the right, you'll find your headlight switch and also a switch labeled panel 
the panel switch will allow you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. On the opposite side of the column, you're going to find your OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. On the left, you'll find the transmission oil DEF level and water temp. On the right, you'll find volts, fuel level, front air, and rear air. Your speedometer and tachometer are located directly in the center. Diagnostic engine information will display above and below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right of this location. We'll first start with the Pierce Command Zone. It's the very top. It's your display. Tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. Please see the owner's manual for more information. You'll also find your system parking brake, pull to apply and push to release. And then to the right, the Allison transmission pad with a digital readout and also an informational note, pump in neutral. Once again, this is the Pierce Command Zone. Tremendous amount of information. See the owner's manual for more details. As we move down to the switch panel, you'll find an engine brake on and off switch setting switch for that engine brake of low, medium, and high, mirror heat, stationary OK to pump and roll indicator, red switches, which are your water pump, and then also foam system. Just a few close-ups here also. System parking brake, Allison transmission pad. Let's move now just forward of this location where you'll find your unit radio. And then just down from this location, you'll find your climate control for heat and defrost and air conditioning. Let's go ahead and look overhead where you'll find this yellow placard. This is the placard that indicates the height of your vehicle, 10 feet, 0 inches, 31 feet long, and 42,000 pounds. To the right, you'll find your emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Moving further to the right on this same plane, you'll find your go light control module. There's an on off switch and also the control module. Moving further to the right, you'll find driver scene, driver's corner scene, front flood, passenger side scene, passenger corner scene, and rear scene. Once again, when any of the switches have been activated, the green light will illuminate within its individual switch. Moving further to the right, you'll find your traffic control advisor, a digital pump pressure readout, water level, and foam level A. You'll also find your siren control and PA speaker system just underneath those areas we just mentioned, and also this red light, if it is flashing, it's indicating not to move the vehicle. You may have a compartment or door open. Let's go to the very center area where you'll find your air conditioner. And directly behind the driver's seat is where you'll find the inverter module. Let's go ahead and move exterior now where you'll find the door directly behind the front cab door. This will gain access to an adjustable shelf. There is also interior access in this area via a roll-up door. Once again, affixed to the door panel, we'll find all of our safety and warning information, door latch, grab handle, and also window control. Let's move now inside the vehicle where we'll find a roll-up compartment door, LED lighting inside. In the very center, you'll find a lift and turn latch. This gains access to the rear portion of the engine. This is where you'll complete your daily checks for oil and transmission checks. As we move to the rear wall, you'll find two seats and also SCBA seats in addition with a center mounted USB style 12 volt access. As you move to the rear section of the cab, you'll find your shoreline inlet, auto eject, and also a air inlet, auto eject. Moving now to the exterior portion, at the very top section, roll-up door gains us access into this space. You'll find storage location, also backboard storage location. As we move downward from this location, you'll find two cross lays located here, passenger side and driver side. You'll also find a warning label indicating entanglement hazard. Because of these lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement, and that's why we have this warning information placard here. Let's move now down to the very bottom to the notch area, or on the now driver's side. There are two two and a half inch discharges located on this side, ball valve, and there are also a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move to the center, you'll find the Pierce logo, American flag eagle. This is your large diameter pump inlet. Moving to the right, we've got an additional warning label here regarding do not mix different brands of foam or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. This is going to be your draft tank foam lever and also a port down in the lower section for filling foam.
We do have a warning label here regarding facing the vehicle while climbing on the vehicle. And then also all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. There is also a two and a half inch female ball valve located here. This is your auxiliary inlet. Let's move here now to some close up. First upper left hand discharge and also left hand number two discharge. You'll find your foam fill draft foam lever. And also as we move down to the bottom, all of our color coded drains. Let's move up to the top of the pump panel where we'll find first, if you've engaged your pump from the cab, you'll find the okay to pump LED light indicating that your pump is engaged. You'll also find the foam A, which is the green module on our left. We have a master intake and master discharge gauge in this gray module area. Between the two of those, you'll find test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. Let's move to the right where you'll find a PCM fault indicator. Not only is it a visual light, you'll also get an audible alarm. The audible alarm down at the very bottom does have an outer edge of the bezel that does turn to dampen the audible sound. Let's move down from this location where we'll find our cross lay discharges. Then as we move just to the right, you'll find your fire pump primer. It is a push to prime air style, and you'll also find a minimum of 1000 RPMs for best practices. Your minimum operation maintenance schedule, which we'll go over in just a few moments, and then also your rear discharge. You do note the red indicator indicating water and foam capable discharges. To the right, your pressure throttle governor, and also water tank level indicator. As we move down, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line valve. Moving to the right, you'll find your tank to pump. It is an electric valve. Moving further to the right, you'll find your master stream or deluge discharge. Also moving further to the right, you'll find the electric valves. There are two of them located here and control the passenger side. Let's move to the upper right module where you'll find the red Husky 3 foam system. And also just beneath that, you'll find operating instructions for the foam system and also a specification placard. Let's move further down on the pump panel. We'll start down on the left with this warning label indicating that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they've received proper training. This is a twist, which is your primer drain. Moving to the right, you'll find all your color coded and labeled discharge drains. And then we'll also find a Pandora. We'll take a look inside the Pandora, first starting with this yellow handle. This is going to match the information on the left hand side rear of the Pandora. This is for foam operations. You'll also find your manual pump shift, which is a protected switch. Let's go ahead and take a look at the vertical side sheet. This is the forward section. This is going to be a control module for your EXM master stream device. You'll also find that you do have an extender which will raise the master stream device above the cab level. Also down at the very bottom, you'll find a switch for your cab cargo lights. And also a caution information regarding electrical disconnect anything prior to doing any welding on the vehicle. We do have a remote for our master stream device and let's go ahead and go back to the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200 and 250 PSI. On the left, GPM associated with test pressure. On the right, the associated RPM with test pressure. In the very center, you'll find the five digit job number 35010. Let's move now to the first compartment in the upper portion right of the pump panel. You'll find your shoreline outlet plug. When plugged into shoreline power, this will activate your battery charging system. As we move through the rest of the compartments, I would like to point out there is ventilation also and LED lighting. As we move down to the first door in front of the front axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage with retaining strap and also an oxygen bottle storage location. As to the rear of the axle, you'll find a single SCBA bottle storage location and then all of our fill locations for all of our fuels. We'll go over those next. First, some close-ups of the items we just talked about. As we move back, the silver cap is going to be your ultra low sulfur diesel. As we move the flap downward, it exposes the 4.5 US gallon blue DEF cap. As we move through the rest of the compartments in the upper corner, you'll find a plug. This is going to be tied to shoreline power and also your inverter. Moving to the right, you'll find a bottom tray. The release mechanism and lock is on the right hand side. Here's a close up of that shoreline and also inverter outlet. It is red in color to distinguish the difference between them. This is the door in the outright open position and locked in position. As we move to the rear of the apparatus, we'll find brake, turn, and reverse lights. 
You'll also find a variety of different emergency lights. These are the lower emergency lights. As we move to the upper portion, we do have a step system on the left-hand side of the vehicle. They are full down steps for gaining access to go aloft. We do have hose bed lights and also rear scene lights. And then also again, a warning label when climbing on the vehicle, make sure that you face the vehicle while climbing. As we move to the upper portion in the left, you'll find the storage location for your 10 foot folding ladder and also long handled tool storage. In the very center roll up compartment door, we do have a pull out tray. The release mechanism is located on the right. This is now in its full outright position. Let's move now to the right hand side of the image. We do have a warning here regarding pressure hazard. Once again, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. And then also a manual override. This is for your hydraulic ladder rack. As we move around to the passenger side in the upper most right corner, you'll find once again inverter and shore power outlet, red in color to distinguish the difference. And then also let's go ahead and move through the compartments, first starting with the SCBA storage location. There are three SCBA bottles to the rear of the axle and then also one in the front section and also oxygen storage. As we move up to the compartment, you'll find a D handle gains access to the tool board. Once the tool board has been unlocked and pulled outright, you'll find there's dry deck material, front and rear tool board peg boards, and then also a locking mechanism on the hinge side. Three SCBA bottle storage locations to the rear, and then also you have SCBA bottle storage locations in front of the front axle. Let's go ahead and move downward from this location. I have a warning label here regarding extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. Be cautious where you park your vehicle, especially during regen operations. As we move to the forward compartment, once again, shoreline inlet and inverter power in the upper right corner. Let's go ahead and move now to the mid section. You'll find same roll up door access to the second discharge, backboard storage, Let's move downward from this location. Once again, we do have that warning label regarding entanglement hazard. As we move down to the notch on the passenger side, let's start first on the left. This is your powered equipment rack module. It is the gray module. You do have a danger sticker on that. We'll go over that next. We also have an informational placard here regarding warning. Do not ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move to the right behind the Pierce logo, American flag Eagle, large diameter passenger side inlet. Moving further to the right, warning label here regarding pressure hazard. And then as we move down, we'll find the discharge. This is the passenger side two and a half. It does have an electric valve. Therefore, there is an override. As we move further down, you'll find your large diameter discharge. It is an electric valve and therefore there is an override. As we move to the left, you'll find your cab lift instructions for raise and lower. And then also on there, there's some danger and caution information. As we move down to the very bottom, you'll find your color coded discharge drains. This is your powered equipment rack. There are instructions to raise and to lower. You also have danger information, a master switch, and then an up or down position. When the light is on, it's indicating the master has been turned on. Let's move down to the cab area. We'll start at the rear section here, affixed to the door panel. Once again, all of our safety and warning information. I'd also like to point out there is a red grab handle on the piano hinge located on the rear doors for gaining access in and out of the cab. EMS compartment located in the center here, uh, just to the rear I should say, and then also roll up door, LED lights, and an adjustable shelf. Overhead you'll find push on and off white or red lenses, and then also your rear facing air conditioner. As we move just forward to this location, directly behind the officer seat, you'll find access via the outside or inside. You do have a side facing camera as we move to the door panel, once again, safety warning information affixed to the door panel. As we move inside, your vehicle is equipped with airbags. This is the supplemental restraint system. Be cautious when mounting any equipment in this area. And then also on the A pillar is where you'll find your windshield wiper fluid fill location. As we move just to the left of the officer seat, you'll find 12 volt via USB style, siren, and also siren brake. That's for your mechanical siren. As we move to the overhead position. Let's start in the very center, starting with your Firecom module. And then as we move to the right, you'll find the wireless system for your Firecom. This is the base station. Moving to the right, we'll find some switches. Let's go over a few of those. First, starting with the driver's side scene, driver corner scene, front flood, passenger side scene, passenger side corner scene, and then also rear scene. 
Once again, when any of these switches have been activated, the green light will illuminate, indicating the switch is active. As we move to the right, you'll find your Go Light Control Module. You do have an on and off switch with the light indicating it's on, and then the control stick. Moving to the passenger side, you'll find your ladder storage. You do have a three section and also a roof ladder. Let's go ahead and move to the upper portion of the vehicle on the top of the vehicle. Just a quick image here from the front moving toward the rear. Let's go ahead and identify a few things. Over on the driver's side, you're going to find two compartments located in the upper portion. LED lighting inside. As you move to the rear hose bed area and dunnage, you'll find your top fill location for water. And then also you'll find your foam tank level A. We do have a warning placard on the foam tank. This is indicating do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Let's go ahead and move forward to this location into the dunnage area. This is where your master stream device is going to be located. You'll also find the yellow diamonds indicating the walking space area. This is your Husky 3 foam system reservoir. As we look to the very rear wall of the dunnage area, you'll find your powered equipment rack. This is the hydraulic mortar and reservoir. This is your Husky 3 foam system. There is a fill location down in the lower portion on the right. And then just a quick look toward the rear section where you'll find your find your hose bed dividers. There are three of them and they do have a cutout for grasping to go aloft. Quick look here at your master stream device. Let's move now to the cab area where you'll find these two warning labels. This is a non-walking surface, therefore we have this warning label not to walk in this area. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the images here. This is going to be the driver's side with your compartment doors in the closed position and now with all of our compartment doors in the open position. Let's move around to the passenger side. Same thing, compartment closed. And let's go ahead and take a look now with them in the open position. Congratulations, Bainbridge Island, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35010. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.